Hello, everyone. Welcome to uh, a very awkward hour of me talking to the camera. Uh, so I'm going to talk. <clears throat> so I'm going to talk about something fun, uh, something that has a lot to do with the stuff we're seeing in the class, but that's like sort of tangential, um, sort of um uh, just not at all required uh but very fun um so the the thing is how can we use complex numbers to tell us thing about things about natural numbers and and the question i'm gonna answer is which numbers are the sums of two squares so i guess you can you can start looking at the natural numbers well sums of two squares are positive i mean sums of two squares of, of integers. So I only need to look at positive numbers and just go down the list. So zero is zero squared plus zero squared. One is one squared plus zero squared. Two is one plus one, that's a sum of squares. Three is not a sum of squares. Uh, four, it's a square, which makes it a sum of squares because one of the one of zero squared is a square. Five is four plus one. Uh, six is not a sum of squares. Seven is not a sum of squares. Eight is four plus four. Nine is a square. Ten, ten is nine plus one. Eleven is not a sum of squares. <clears throat> Twelve is not a sum of square. Is not a sum of squares. Uh, 13 is a sum of squares, it's uh, 9 plus 4. 14 is, uh, 14 is not a sum of squares, 15 is not, 16 is a square, 17 is 16 plus 1, 18 is, um, 18 is not a sum of squares. Um, 19 is not a sum of squares, <clears throat> 20 is 16 plus 4. So, I don't know, fun game to play with board. Uh, try to see the pattern here. Uh, just looking at this, seeing the pattern would be. No, 18 is, 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 18 is a sum of squares, it would be pretty impressive. 18, what's 18? 18 is 9 plus 9. Um, so, um, so um, let me start with the first uh, first thing we see. The first pattern is that Every four numbers, I get an X. And that X has a very simple reason to exist. One, two, three, four. Um, if N is a three modulo four, N is not a sum of squares. And let's prove that. Um, so the way to prove this is to take all the numbers and square them. Um, module four. Module four, uh, zero squared is zero, one squared is one, two squared is four which is zero, and three squared is nine, which is one. So a sum of two squares can be zero, one, or two, but not three. Since three, we need to have the three plus zero or two plus one. So um, clearly we're not done because there's a lot of numbers here that I cannot explain. I don't know, you can keep looking, you can, um, you, you might notice that the multiples of three like to be on the no list, except obviously nine is going to be a yes. 
Um, but um, nine is a yes, but of, of course nine is a yes. 18 is also a yes. Um, 12, um, and then there's 14 in this list, which is not a multiple of three, is not three mod four. Um, so I guess, I guess, uh, I guess we need to explain. I, I mean, I guess we have some explaining to do. This seems, um, this seems tricky. Um, so the first thing we notice, the second thing we notice, I already noticed the first thing, um, is that when you multiply a sum of two squares, you get a sum of two squares, which is, I don't know, it's surprising to me. So, second pattern. When I multiply sums of two squares, I get a sum of two squares. And the reason, and I have I have two um, I have two proofs. I have the same proof for you twice, but here's the I have a sad version and a and a happy version. The sad version is that you take a sum of two squares and you multiply by another sum of two squares. So these are sums of two squares, clearly. Um, and you can multiply this out. And once you multiply it out, you can see that this is also a sum of two squares. And, and that's it, we're done. Um, so, I mean, you know why this is true because you know how to multiply. You can even, you're even allowed to foil here on the left, on the right, you can, you can expand those squares and the two AB term on, on these two is gonna magically cancel. So I don't know, it feels like I got really lucky. Like, where did I get this from, this formula from? So let me give you the same proof. Um, <clears throat> but better. So the same proof of better says if if we have a sum of two squares, um, a sum of two squares is the the norm, the square norm of um, of a number of a Gaussian integer. So if a number is the norm of something and another number is the norm of something else, then I know that the, the norm multiplies. So uh, when I multiply these two numbers, I know exactly where to find the number uh whose norm this is it's alpha times beta so um if you stare closely at these two magical squares here that i wrote those are the real and the imaginary parts that you get from multiplying uh complex numbers so um so well two two takeaways from this um if i know so for example how do I know that 18 has has a tick next next to it on the list? Because two does and nine does. So really, well, I don't know. That doesn't explain, you know, nine, it's not, it doesn't go the other way, right? Three is not a sum of squares, but you multiply two. You multiply two of these. Uh, you multiply three and three, and of course you get a sum of squares. But not if you multiply three and seven. 21 is not on the list. 
Um, so that gives us a lot of yeses, but doesn't help us with the noes. Um, but at least it gives us a hint if you're going to be multiplying things, you should look at prime numbers. Um, and the other hint, um, so hint number one, we should look at primes. Um, and hint number two that we get from this proof is use the Gaussian integers um, and being the sum of two squares is the same as being the being the norm of something. Of course, that something is a plus bi. So, um, so you can see. I mean, I don't know. With this, with this multiplication property, it seems pretty clear to me that I should really be using. I should really be looking at complex numbers. So, um, let's try to play the game up with with primes um, here. Uh, here, it's easy to see the pattern especially even though we, what we know. So two is the sum of squares, five is uh, five is the sum of squares, three isn't, uh, seven is not, 11 is not, 17 is, 19 is not, 23 is not a sum of squares, 29 is uh, 25 plus four, 31 is not a sum of squares, 37 is 36 plus one, 41 is 25 plus 16, 43, 47 is not a sum of squares. So not only, okay, so uh, I don't know at which point in this uh, you're getting bored, but this list, th these lists, these are a lot easier to see which prime numbers are going into each column. Uh, these are the prime numbers, which are three mod four. So, I'm, I'm very, I can tell very fast uh, that they're not a sum of squares. Um, so the question, so I guess the obvious question is, are all primes that are one mod four on the left column? And this is really the, the crux of, of everything. Can every prime number that is one mod four be represented as a sum of squares? It sure seems like it can, and and the answer is going to be that it can. But I, I mean, this is this is hard. Uh, at least it seems it seems like a hard question to me. And then there's two, which is neither, but it is definitely a theorem that it's, it's a sum of two squares. Um, so. So like I said, if you're three mod four, definitely you're not a sum of two squares, but if you're one mod four, it seems like it always works that you're a sum of two squares, but um, is there like, is there a, re is there a reason? Uh, so let's find the reason. That's gonna be most of what I do today. Um, is every time of the form for n plus one, a sum of two squares. So uh, the answer is gonna be yes, and I'm gonna prove that. I'm gonna use a lot of, a lot of the stuff we've seen in the course so far. Uh, so I'm going to start with an, an easier question. So instead of instead of solving, so let, let's just say let p be a prime that is one mod four. 
So first thing that I'm gonna do is instead of solving a squared plus b squared equals p, I'm going to solve the equation or find solutions. to uh, p divides a squared plus b squared. Um, even, I'm gonna make my life a bit harder. Solve p divides a squared plus one. So of course, I mean, I'm trying to show something stronger. Um, if, but of course, if p is a sum of two squares, definitely, I should be able to find two squares whose sum is a multiple of p and without making them both a multiple of p, of course, otherwise that would be very boring. So, um, so that's the first thing I'm, I'm gonna show. Um, say proposition. Uh, in Z, in ZP, oh, writing this ZP. If P is one more four, there is a solution to X squared equals to negative one. So X is a, a residue class now. <clears throat> if X squared equals negative one, that would mean that X squared plus one is zero, which would make X squared plus one a multiple of P. Um, so, um, so I know the proof I knew. Um, the, so the proof I know uses that um, the units of ZP the units of ZP are a cyclic group which is a very I mean it's a very cool property but I don't know if you if you saw it last semester um, probably we're gonna show it in the next chapter but I'm not gonna I'm gonna gonna use it um, Alternatively, let's see. I want to find, I want to show, show that x squared plus one has a root in ZP or, um, I guess equivalently, I want to show that it's reducible because it's a degree two polynomial. It's going to have a root whenever um, it's going to have a root whenever you can reduce it because that's the only way to reduce it if you put a degree one factor. So um, I thought of this sneaky way to do it to use polynomial rings, uh, which is to take a polynomial that has everything as a root. Um, Let's show that the GCD of X squared plus one and the polynomial X minus one, X minus two, X minus three, all the way to X minus P minus one is not one. <clears throat> so you take all the degree one factors. The, the nice thing about this being a, a field with a finite number of elements is I can just multiply all the roots together. Um, and basically, if, if these two share a factor, that means that, uh, well, that means that one of these degree one factors is gonna be in there. And if it's, for example, X minus three, that's gonna mean that um, that three squared is negative one in ZP. <clears throat> so, uh, well, there's a problem of having no clue how to work with this polynomial, but um, 
what I can do is um, show that this polynomial, I don't know if you've seen it before, but if you haven't, this is really fun. This polynomial is x to the p minus one minus one. Remember, this is this only happens with zp. If you work for the say the rational numbers, I don't know this is just ugly. But in zp, you multiply everything that everything that shows up in between there uh, is just a multiple of p, and you end up with a polynomial. The degree is p minus one, right? Because those numbers there are going from one to p minus one, which makes p minus one numbers. Um, you multiply all of those together, you get something as a VP minus one. And then somehow all the terms, all the terms become zero, except for the last one, which is negative one. Um, so uh, let me just show you this. Um, So I want to show, let me just write it out again. When you multiply all the degree one factors you can think of, all the monic degree one factors, you get x to the p minus one, minus one. And the proof is, um, first we're gonna show that both have the same roots. Uh, they have roots, everything that is not zero. Um, it's clear for the top one, right? Because the, each each of these numbers is a root of one of the factors. And for x to the p minus one minus one, this is for this is for Maslow theorem, um, which you you may or may not have seen, but people do use this um, this word. So let me just. <clears throat> Uh, tell you. So the proof in this case, the proof of Kramathlier theorem is the units of Zp, which is the numbers from p my, 1 to p minus 1, form an abelian group. Of order p minus 1, which means there's p minus 1 elements. Um, and now, Lacroix's theorem. I apologize for teaching with you and not knowing how to pronounce the guy with the wig's name, uh, which you hopefully remember from last semester, says that the order of any element in any group divides the order of the group. Um, here, the order of the units of the CP is P minus one is the number of elements he has. And this means that for every everything in, in this group, the order, so let me remind you, the order of A is the smallest power of A, which is trivial, which is one. So if N is the order of A, then P minus one, uh, well, N, N divides P minus one by Lagrange's theorem. And that means that P minus one is N times something. So A to the N is one. So you multiply both sides by M, you get that they're, bo that they're both one. But this is a to the n m, which is a to the p minus one. So anything to the p minus one, except for zero, is one in Zp. 
so so the roots of x to the p minus one minus one are also one all the way to p minus one. Uh, and remember that the, it has degree p minus one, so there can't be more. So, um, <clears throat> so where we are is these two polynomials have the same roots. Um, and also they are both monic. And I claim they are the same. So the reason they are equal is just um, it's just what, what we know that um, one is a root of x to the p minus one minus one. So x to the p minus one minus one is a multiple of x minus one. Now let's say we have pure polynomial f one x, and now this is a root which is two. So this is equal, this is a multiple, the, the fa second factor there is a multiple of x minus two. And you keep going on because they're, they're both monic, you end up with um, just monic polynomials all around. And this is all the roots. Um, you end up with something of the re zero uh, but looking at the highest order terms, this has to be one. So, so there you go. Okay. <clears throat> Are there any questions? Now I should like go into my call with my phone and make a voice and ask a question, but I'm not that committed to the performance. Um, I don't know. You can email me questions. Uh, you can like and subscribe also, I don't care. So, um, all right, we we're trying to show that in ZP, there is a solution to x squared plus one equals zero. That's what we were. Um, and what I was saying is I wanna find a root of this polynomial. Why don't I just uh, find the GCD with this polynomial? And, and this looked nasty, but now it just said that this is just x to the p minus one minus one. So uh, back to what we were doing. I want to show x plus one equals zero as a solution. Um, in ZP, show that these are not mutually prime. And the thing is the second polynomial here, I wrote here that has all the roots, is x to the p minus one minus one. So, um, well, I can show you this real fast. Um, you can, I mean, do long division. Should we do long division? What if, let's, yeah, let's do an example of long division. The thing is x plus one is gonna divide this polynomial. So uh, how do you do long division? Um, you have x squared plus one, 
I'd say what's a prime that's one month for that it, I won't where it won't die. Um, uh, what's that number? Thirteen. So x squared goes into x to the thirteen. Um, no, no, sorry, not thirteen. Twelve. Uh, b is thirteen, and here I have b minus one. So the quotient here is x to the ten. And now I'm supposed to subtract x to the 12 plus x to the 10. So I'm left with, I'm subtracting, so I'm left with negative x to the 10. So then I get negative x to the 8. So I subtract x to, x to the 10, uh, or x to the 8. Sorry, these both have minus signs. Ah, you know, you know how to do this. I don't know why I'm doing this to you. Here you get um, subtracting, so you get positive x to the eighth, blah, 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 blah. This was this page was too short for this computation. Uh, you get the sine alternate. And, and this is what you get in the remainder is zero. So uh, you, you know how this is going to go um, in general. If you want to divide x to the p minus one by x squared plus one, you can, you can do it because this is one minus x squared plus x to the fourth minus x to the sixth, blah, 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 blah. And in the end you have x to the p minus three. And the thing is, um, does this make sense? Do the signs make, make sense? And the answer is they do. You have a plus plus sign for x to the n and n is one mod four. One mod four is zero mod four. And a minus sign for x to the n and n is two mod four, which is two, six, ten, fourteen. And that means that means that you end with a plus. What am I doing? That means that you end with a plus sign. Is that what should be happening? Let me pause and think for a second. <laughs> All right, let's pretend that didn't happen. Uh, okay. So, all the way around, um, it's supposed to. I'm supposed to get negative one for the for the starting term. So it it's negative the polynomial that I just wrote. Um, which means it's not plus minus plus minus, it's minus plus minus plus. So you have a negative sign on the multiples of four and you have a positive sign in the non multiples of four, but even, they're all even. So, um, P minus three, which is the last one, right? Because it's the one where you add two and you got P minus one has, um, well, P minus three, three is one, P is one mod four. So this is two mod four. Um, so it has a plus sign. Uh, so, so this makes sense. This multiplication makes sense when B is one mod four, but not when it is not one mod four. So X squared plus one divides X to the B minus one minus one, because we just wrote out the division and uh, well, you're better at division than me. So you probably did it better than me in your head. It's that polynomial x to the p minus three minus the next plus minus jump the exponents by two. Uh, it's just divisible. So since this is um, x minus one, x minus two, all the way to x minus p minus one, well, um, now we're going to use that 
the polynomial ring over ZP is a U of D. So X squared plus one must have a common factor. X squared plus one can be basically can be prime because it definitely doesn't divide any of those degree one polynomials. If it was prime and it divides the product, it has to divide one of the factors. Um, so X squared plus one factors. Um, in some way. <clears throat> okay. And now, and now what? That's it, right? Um, so it has a root. A squared and B squared are negative one in ZP. So I've shown the first promise I made that negative one is a squared in ZP. So or in other words, um, there's some x, there's some integer x so that p divides x squared plus one. So if p is one mod four. So now, now comes the, the very sneaky part. So how do we get from here? Question mark, question mark, profit. Uh, well, that was very 1995. Um, something happens, and p is a sum of two squares. So, what goes in the middle? So, this is where I want to get. So, so the trick here. is um, look at p dividing x squared plus one as something that is happening over the Gaussian integers, which of course, if you divide something over the integers, you divide it over a larger ring. That just means there's an integer such that p times something is x squared plus one, still true over the complex numbers, uh, but over the, over the Gaussian integers, I can go like this, x squared plus one is no longer x squared plus one, but it's x minus i times x plus i. So um, what's happening now is that p divides a product. And you're probably, probably getting used to what I say right after p divides our product. If P is a prime, so if P is a prime in, in the Gaussian integers, P divides X minus I or P divides X plus I, uh, but it clearly doesn't. Because, well, if you, I don't know about X, I mean, I know about X, it's not a multiple of P. Um, this is not a, this is, these are numbers are, are not integers, especially not one divided by P. So P is not a prime. In the Gaussian integers. Probably, I mean, you've done the homework, you know that five and 17 are not primes in the Gaussian integers. Um, so now we use our infinite algebra wisdom that the Gaussian integers are U of T or is, is, I guess it's one ring. The Gaussian integers is a U of T. This means that P, that means that every reducible is prime. P is not a prime it cannot be irreducible. So P is the product of two Gaussian integers. 
and they're not units, so they're not plus minus one or plus minus i, which would be very boring. So um, now it's just downhill from here. B is alpha beta, alpha beta in Z that join I, not one, not I. Um, what happens when I look at the square of the absolute value? Well, this, the absolute value of, of P squared, of P is P squared. So um, either, so out of these numbers, either one of them is one and the other is P squared. So there's three options, I guess. If one of them is one and the other is P squared, then it's just a unit. The only thing that can have valuation one is a unit. Uh, and that leaves me with one option. Um, mu of alpha is P, mu of beta is P, and now we're done. If alpha is A1 plus A2i, it means that A1 squared plus A2 squared equals P. And that's all I wanted. So every prime of the form, uh, of the form one mod four, is a sum of two squares. And I, don't, I mean, I, I did it in a strange way where I have, um, so this is mu of beta is one, where I have no clue what the answer is. I mean, like, you gave me a small prime, I just guess, but it must be there because I know it's, a, I know all these things, it's the Euclidean domain, so you have D, and I showed that it, that it divides a square plus one, and that gives me some identity here over the complex numbers that just can't happen if unless P also splits in a in some in some way. So it's I, I don't know it's, I think it's very cool. It's so unexpected that this would work, but it does work, and it is true. Every prime that's one mod four is a sum of two squares. And I guess I haven't told you uh, what. Um, I haven't told you exactly what numbers you can write as, as a sum of two squares, but we know that we multiply. So multiplying sums of two squares, um, we have that all of these numbers Or sums of two squares. Um, you can multiply any power of two. So let's say two to the m. Because, uh, well, two is one square plus one squared. And then you can multiply any, if you take primes that are all uh, one mod four, you can multiply them together as many times as you want because multiplying sums of two squares still gives you sums of two squares. And then you can multiply any square together because of course this is a sum of two squares. So you could have a three in the factorization, um, but you need to have a, you have, if you have a three, you need to have a nine, you need to have an even number of threes. Um, so I guess, well, I guess I don't know that you need it, but I know that all of these work. Um, so in other words, any number such that the primes, which are three mod four, um, appear an even number of times. So these are the numbers that I just wrote. Um, 
because primes that are three mod four are not two and aren't any of these. So they have to be here instead of the square. So they have to appear um, in, in twos. Um, and the other way around, if, if the primes appear an even number of times, that's just a square. And you can just stick that into that this n part. So uh, I guess, let me just prove the converse. Um, These are the only numbers that you can write as a sum of two squares. So if you saw the list, if you saw this list um, here and you said, well, the numbers that have an X are the numbers that have a prime that is three mod four in their factorization appearing an odd number of times. That's super impressive, honestly. Like, congratulations. Um, you know. You should comment down below or something. That can be written as a sum of two squares. Um, so let me show you how to prove it. Maybe I'll just sketch it. Uh -oh. Say we have a prime, suppose, so, suppose n is a squared plus b squared and q divides n and q is a prime that is three mod four. Uh, we are gonna show that q divides a and q divides b. The way to do this um, is to use, again, let's show this plane. Use, again, the complex number. So I'm saying q divides n, which is the sum of two squares. That means that q divides a plus bi times m a minus bi. <clears throat> now, again, q is irreducible. In the Gaussian integers, because it's three mod four, um, because there is no number with valuation q, because it's three mod four. A number that is three mod four cannot be the sum of two squares. This means that q is a prime. And if Q is a prime and it divides a product, it must divide one of them. This is because it's a U of D that all irreducible are prime. And if, if Q divides one of these numbers, well, that means that either this number or this number doesn't really matter are Gaussian integers, uh, which means that Q divides A and Q divides B. Uh, so N divides A squared plus B squared. I can write uh, A, uh, I can write A as A prime times Q and B as B prime times Q. This means that n is q squared times a new number and a different number. So you know what number is also a sum of two squares, n divided by q squared. So if n had an odd number of q's in its factorization, I, I just showed that n is a multiple of q, and it's a multiple of q squared. So. Blah. If n has a q in its factorization, then I've just shown that q squared divides n, and also that n divided by q squared is a sum of two squares. So uh, keep going. 
if n prime has a q, then you can divide it by q squared again. And if, I mean, if it doesn't, then n has an even number of q's. If it doesn't, then you keep going. And this has to end with zero, zero numbers of zero q's in the factorization, because if you had just one, this proof just shows that there, there has to be two. There has to be at least two. The proof just shows that if there is zero, there's two. So um, I guess five times seven squared times 13 times 19 times 29 times 41 is the sum of two squares. And I can tell it just by looking at the number. That's pretty cool. All right. Uh, see you Monday.